Hamilton. Deep left field. And over the bullpen and into the patio in front of the Royals Hall of Fame. And I'm going to steal one of your lines, bud. <laughs> Swung on, gone. Uh, how about battered and battered? Oh, man. Royals fans out there, it has finally ended. The boys in blue are winning again, opening up the 10-game homestand with a 4-1 to victory over the Miami Marlins. Let's talk about it, shall we? Welcome to the Royals Recap. My name is Jacob Milham. I am one half of the Royals Rundown Podcast. If you are listening to this, the people that make this possible are over at RoyalsReview.com. You can follow all the great work on Twitter, on Facebook, on the website, however you want to do it. Um, I know I just got done writing the This Week in the Miners column, talking about how some of the prospects are doing down on the farm. Royals rumblings are going to come out tomorrow morning. Everything that you need to be a Kansas City Royals fan is over at RoyalsReview.com. Coming up later on in the show, we will hear from Salvador Perez, interim manager Paul Hoover, and first baseman Vinny Pasquantino. But before we get into it, let's just go ahead and take a breath. And all together now, we say, hey, 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 hey. We're back in the win column, guys. Whew, thank freaking goodness. The scoreless inning streak finally ended at 25. You heard that right, 25. And Vinny Pasquantino busted open the scoring putting Kansas City on the board tonight with a solo home run to begin the fourth inning for the uh, for the Kansas City Royals. Who and that was a three run inning for Kansas City. And that was all she wrote. That was that was it. That's all they needed to win tonight. The Marlins lineup was really, really stifled, only logging four hits and all of them coming off of Cole Reagans. This was a great rebound game for the bullpen. But I do want to talk about this lineup first because there was a lot of shakeups. Michael Garcia was back in the leadoff spot. And no, he did not produce. He didn't get a hit, didn't reach base. But he was playing at second base tonight, which was very, very peculiar to see. Um, we'll probably see more of that as Michael Massey is back on the Major League roster. But for the time being, he will be... Uh, nearly exclusively a designated hitter. So more to follow on that down the road. Bobby Witt Jr. got his 100th hit on the season in his one hit, one walk performance tonight. According to the Elias Sports Bureau, he is the fifth Kansas City Royal to be the first American League player to 100 hits in a season, joining Lou Pinella, George Brett, Willie Wilson, and Whit Merrifield. Pretty good company there, if you do ask me. Uh, Salvador Perez, he had a very, very good night tonight. Having a home run, only one strikeout. It was, it was looking a little rough there for a moment, but he rebounded quite nicely. He homered on the first pitch he saw immediately following Vinny Pasquantino's home run. This was Salvi's 12th home run matching wit for the team lead. And also, it was the first time Kansas City hit back-to-back homers this season. Uh, well, Back when, uh, fo- yeah, following March 31st versus Minnesota when Kyle Isbell and Michael Garcia did just that. Hunter Renfro also had a home run of his own in the sixth inning to mark his first hit in three games since being reinstated from the IL last Friday. Now get this, Hunter Renfro, in his last 23 games, dating back to May 12th, he's batting 286. Seven doubles, four home runs, a 557 slugging percentage, all totaling up to 932 OPS. That is that's pretty damn good. And I I don't think that he's getting lauded enough for the turnaround. This is exactly the Hunter Renfro that we wanted to see as Royals fans when they when they signed him. It was like, hey, if he's gonna be on the roster, if he's gonna be getting paid good money, then he better be playing like a good player and In this recent stretch, he really has. Michael Massey, in his return to the lineup, he was just uh, reinstated to, or excuse me, he was just brought back onto the 26-man roster. 
today. Uh, he did have one hit, one strikeout, but also scored a run of his own. MJ Melendez had a had a two walk performance tonight. No hits, but hey, he got on base twice. Can't ask for too much more. CJ Alexander making his MLB debut, playing at the hot corner tonight, was hitless. Unfortunately, still chasing, reaching base for the first time in a Kansas City Royals uniform, did have one strikeout. And then Kyle Isbell had an absolute magnificent two-out RBI, um, just hit it right up the middle, glanced off the Miami Marlins fielder glove, and that, that scored a run. He only had one strikeout. That was his lone hit on the night. This was not a gangbusters offensive output, from the Royals, but this just goes to show the the lineup doesn't need to be great to win games with this pitching staff. And when you have your ace Cole Reagan sitting on the mound who picked up his fifth win on the season, anything is possible. Reagan's picking up his picking up another quality save, pitching six innings of four hit, one run ball. Did walk three, but get this, he struck out eleven. 11 Marlins batters. Mm, just absolutely love it. The, the swing and miss stuff that he was inducing against Miami, he was just making, a little, making them look foolish. I It was a magnificent start from Cole Reagans. But as we all know, those good starts can go to, go to waste pretty quickly if the bullpen doesn't hold up their end of the bargain. And that is exactly what the bullpen did tonight. Get this. They did not allow us. They... They didn't have a, a single walk. They didn't have a single hit. Chris Stratton, John Schreiber, and James MacArthur all combined for a hitless and scoreless three innings to close out the game, logging four strikeouts between all of them. All in all, that totals up to 15 strikeouts for Kansas City. And if I'm looking at this right, that is a season high for the Royals pitching staff. Yep, they're most in a game in more than two years since they had 16 against Oakland back in 2022. Whew, gotta love it. Royals are currently sitting at 43 and 37, and they're sitting there and they were melting away in Kauffman Stadium tonight. I, I will say that if you were one of the nearly 17,000 in attendance, Good on you, because game time temperature tonight was a cool 100 degrees, making this the warmest game in Kauffman Stadium in nearly 12 years, dating back to July 31st of 2012. All right, well, they're starting off on a good note. They're not, uh, <laughs> they're not getting swept again, at least. And when you have Seth Lugo coming to the mound on Tuesday and then Brady Singer making the start on Wednesday, anything seems possible. So I'm very, very excited to see what this homestand holds for the Royals. Coming up on the other side of the ad break, we will hear from Salvi. We will hear from interim manager Paul Hoover, and we will also hear from Vinny. Stay tuned. Salvador Perez, even during this last road trip, I, I heard you kept saying, we'll be fine, we'll be fine, no big deal, we know how to do this, you're so calm about it, how have you been able to pull through this stretch? Just the group that I have, you know, we're going to play hard to the last game of the season, and that's what we do tonight, you know, forget about what happened in the past, we just need a concentration day by day, we got the win tonight, now we're going we, we call a concentration for tomorrow. Move on till tomorrow, how much did it help when Vinny hits that home run, just to be done? with 25 innings without scoring and then you come with the homer right after. Yeah, pretty good. I think the 25 run, the, the winner scores wrong is part of the game. You know, for Vinny, hit the ball pretty hard, I hit the ball pretty hard, for two, so it's good. We got to talk about your pitcher. What do you want to do here? I need it. Too hot. You, it's all yours. All right. You guys can only hear the conversation down here. 
MJ says, why are you looking at me? Well, because he was one of the two guys dumping the bucket. That's why. Okay, let's talk about Cole Reagans. You know how good he is. We know how good he is. 27 swings and misses tonight, most by any pitcher in a game in baseball this year. How was he able to do it? Pretty good. He got really good stuff. He don't miss any any location tonight. You know, he's one of the best lefty in the game. So he's doing pretty good job tonight. Last thing, even though it's really hot out here, how good is it to, to get home to your own bed, to Kauffman Stadium, and, and move on? It's more important for the fans. Thank you for the support, guys. we we'll see you tomorrow. All right, Salvador Perez. I thought it pulled me in, but hey, it's all his. And he was, he was really good. Um, you know, notoriously, they're, they're pretty, they swing early, but today they were pretty patient versus him, driving that pitch count up, and um, he needed every one of his pitchers to get through six, but he battled, he battled the heat, and he battled that, battled that pitch count, and a tough, tough lineup. I was going to say maybe just about his stuff. I mean, you said they're a bit more patient, but he's still got, I think, a career high in whiffs, and um, they were, you know, they swung and missed on quite a bit. I guess what does that say about him and maybe his stuff, too? Yeah, I mean, he. We, we know he has really, really good stuff. Um, when he when he can get ahead and attack, then, then that's when you see a lot of the, the swing and misses. But you, you're talking about a team that hasn't seen him, and he, he's executing four different pitches for strikes. It's tough on any lineup. What was the, the dugout kind of like after the, the long scoreless drop in to get the two home runs there to kind of get you back? Yeah, I mean, anytime you score runs, you get slap fives. It brings it brings energy. So obviously, Vinny and then Sal backing it up the very next pitch it brought us some energy to, to to the dugout. Did you kind of feel? I don't know if they were pressing during this streak. You know, we've talked about it just with the offensive struggles. Or could you kind of feel it? Could they feel it? And then was it more, you know, just a relief once you get a run across? The- yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak for them, but what it looks like is when, when you're struggling, everybody tries to do a little bit more, right? And it's a tough game. And when we're trying to do more than what, what we can, it becomes a real difficult. So maybe a little bit of pressing because everybody wants to win and get off the snide. Maybe a little bit of pressing but um, they could probably answer that better than me. What are some things you like about C.J. Alexander today in his yeah, I mean, he, he was excited to be there. He was he was ready to hit, and a guy guy kept flipping up change ups and off speed pitches. So um, excited, like we said earlier, excited to see, watch him play, and uh, hopefully he can uh, continue to swing the bat and play the defense that he has been. Is there something to be said about coming back home and being able to reset a little bit for the team? One hundred percent. It's it's. I mean, it's just in, incredible to play in front of the fans. They come out and they support us on a Monday night, and they're there and they're loud, and um, it's fun to play in front of them and, it, and it's it's nice to get the win probably pretty comfortable putting anybody on the mound but just when, when you need a win having cole on the mound and throwing a game like that I just wonder if you could speak to the moment that, that he has a game like yeah i mean i walked past him or the, in the airplane yesterday and i said we're all right we got the stopper going tomorrow and that's that's what we expect we expect him to be able to do that and keep us in the game and until our offense is source some runs and then the bullpen was you know strat and Shrive, um macarthur i mean Really, really good. Yeah, I mean, I think we're pretty realistic about it. Like, we sucked on the road trip. There's not much more to say about it. It sucked. None of us were exactly thrilled with how it went. Um, yeah, and we've been harping on it all year, last year, everything, day by day. Today was a good day. Move on to tomorrow. Is there something to be said about coming home? Yeah, it's nice to play in front of these fans. You know, we've got great fans, so it's a, it's really cool to be here. And good crowd tonight. Um, you know, this place this place is pretty full on a Monday night. Which, by the way, I thought it was Friday when I got here today. I thought we were in the City Connects. It's Monday. I got close. About as far away from Friday as you get. Um, that's how miserable the road trip was. That's how bad we played. I don't even know what day it is. Uh, but I know tomorrow is Tuesday, so that's a step in the right direction. But yeah, the fans are awesome tonight. Ready to get back in, out in front of them tomorrow. All right, y'all, that is going to do it for tonight's Royals recap. If you haven't listened to it already, Jeremy and I dropped the full episode last night. Uh, we had a little bit of a of event session. We just needed to get that out of our system ahead of the homestand and hoping for better things. And that's exactly how this started off. I, I read off your responses um, to the last Royals recap in that episode. So if you missed that, go check it out. 
Once again, my name is Jacob Milham. You can follow me on X, or if you just want to reach out, shoot me an email. My email is in the podcast description below. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Make sure to read what I have going up on RoyalsReview.com tomorrow and just all the great work that goes on over there. And until next time, go Royals!